Hello, everybody. Welcome to our recap show of the 2024 trade deadline. Although, we're going to be waiting to see if there's a huge move that comes in. As I just saw a Bob McKenzie tweet, that the Vegas Golden Knights might actually, or for Chris Johnston, excuse me, the Vegas Golden Knights might be working out a trade with the San Jose Sharks in maybe the most shocking trade of this year, as Tomas Hurdle might be on the move to the Golden Knights. This could be... I, I, I honestly don't know what to say, but we'll have lots of other information to cover from all these other trades. It's great to have you here. As the trade deadline has officially come to a close, but other trades might be trickling in. So we'll keep an eye on the situation here as this pertains to the Golden Knights and Sharks, in addition to teams finishing up their deals here at the deadline. Are you... Oh my God. What? I, I don't believe this. This... I, I honestly, what what is Mike Greer doing? This has to be for the kitchen sink. I don't know. We'll also have to see if there's maybe a third team involved. Xander, I, I have no idea how, how, what brought Greer to this. We have a lot of other trades that happen toward, you know, the final minutes too. Are you curious? Are you kidding me, man? Hurdle has six years left on his deal after this year, too. I do not know. <laughs> Dean, what's up? Well, what happens when you lose out on your first trade in five and a half years? You go after the team who beat you to that trade. I'm talking about the Eric Carlson trade of 2018. That was the last time that the Vegas Golden Knights actually lost trade lost it you know a bidding war for it i have to see what happens here hurdle might as well be going to the doctor shalana you're entirely right first rounders going back to san jose for hurdle i cannot see him in that jersey oh my god did, did I even wake up today? Well, anyway, we got 134 people. Wow. Oh, shit. It's awesome to have so many people here as my heart sinks into my intestines seeing this news. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Pending the trade call. Are you kidding me? And yeah, we'll have to see if there's a third team involved here. All right. Well, anybody who's new here, we're going to be doing streams especially during the playoffs and during the draft, during big moments in the season. And so it'd be awesome to have you here. Uh, I am joined, of course, by my co-host, my dog, Cortana. And yeah, this has to be a haul, to say the least. Multiple first-rounders, top prospect or two from that organization. And again, it's going to depend on what happens. Uh, if there's going to be a third team involved, because that's a monster trade, to say the least. Also, I'll have to see if there's uh, salary retention by the San Jose Sharks. That's a long deal to retain salary on, but consuming 20% of that could help uh, the Golden Knights become more cap front, uh, cap compliant. Excuse me. Hurdle, Hannafin, and Mantha. God, that is beastly. How would you uh, put the lines together, Dean? If Hurdle is your center, your, your 2C, you got Chandler Stevenson as your third center. Holy crap, man. Crosby to the wings. Yeah, I know. Let, let, let's get that already. Or Crosby to the avalanche. Because apparently they haven't made enough deals during this deadline. I I cannot believe this. All right. Let's... I, I got to keep the browser refreshed here. Well, I better enter uh, a row here. Jeez. My fingers might as well be trembling while I'm doing this. I did not expect this. I was going to go live. I I knew the Sharks had to do something at the, at the deadline. Their biggest move, of course, was trading Duclair to the Lightning. 
but I thought maybe they'd, you know, find a way to send Barbanov off. Uh, they might find a way to send off, I don't know, Mikhail Granlund even. Hearing the Kings are shopping Pierre-Luc Dubois. I didn't see this yesterday. But I have no idea how you get rid of that contract. And really, the only goaltender being dealt here who's a mainstay in a lineup is uh, Jake Allen so far. John, what's going on? By the way, yeah, I'm, I'm stoked to have you guys here. we got CJ. We've got Taves. Welcome back. Dr. Disinfect. Good to have you here. TJ Brody. Leafs have done nothing. Yeah, they've been really quiet. Stupid seal. I Pending a call, man. Pending a call. I mean, thank God to have you guys here. Otherwise, I would be beside myself. Canucks are done for the day. I think that's cool. They're ahead of schedule. But I guess they're holding on to Lindholm. No Gensel for them. Jesus. No, I'll never forget that. Hurdle also scored the second goal on that five-minute power play that they had uh, five years ago. Worst offseason ever. Yeah, it's going to be your worst offseason in, in quite some time for the Penguins. Cheyenne, what's going on? Uh, Barry Trotz, of course, continuing to uh, be active with trades. Shipping off Gurionov and uh, acquiring Jason Zucker. So you could still keep your playoff hopes alive. What do you think of the trades? Uh, there was more that happened than I would have expected. You know, a lot of like smaller moves, but some names that, I'm, that I hadn't heard on trade boards. Jesus. Uh, Winnipeg, by the way, getting Tyler Toffoli. And uh, also acquiring, um, I thought they got a defenseman in there as well. Uh, I think they did a nice job, though. Colin Miller, that's the guy, yeah. But yeah, this could be, uh, yeah, a gut punch. Mark, hey, hey, welcome. And Billy, hey, good to have you here, man. Trots is cooking something. I, I love me some Barry Trots. Behind the bench or in the luxury box, either way. What what else could Vegas offer us? I know I like they got what Briston. That's that's their top uh, top guy. Toast tactical. Hey, twenty uh, first rounders and Jack Eichel. <laughs> right, Bunting. He's tr trash. I like Bunting. I like Bunting. You know, having that effort and presence. But that that's the that's the one thing with the Hurricanes because you gave up your physical agitator in front of the net. So Svechnikov really has to step it up. I think his goal scoring's been down a bunch this year. No other moves are confirmed. Right. A couple of these at the very top, I think, are, you know, we're waiting for, like, the trade call to go in. But this is the latest that I've seen. Uh, but, yeah, uh, thanks for jumping in here, Rick. 36 points in 60 games. Yeah, but, I mean, what's his ice time? Uh, can teams trade after the deadline? Oh, God. I, I'm i terrible at answering that. If, if someone, else, someone else can clarify that. I mean, I know that we could still see moves come in just because of trade calls being reported to the league. But I think there's like some sort of waivers system. There's like a way to still get players through through waivers uniquely at this point. I, but I'm not 100% sure. 36 and 60 is pretty good for a second liner. Hey, it's not bad. Got to get at least a second for Hurdle. I mean, yeah, if, if you want to uh, unload his whole salary on Vegas... <laughs> I can't imagine a return that's going to be okay. Yeah, honestly, Ian, I, I I agree with you, man. Big time Sharks fan. All the way in Ontario, too. But yeah, I don't know if the Golden Knights really have... They would have to really just push their chips in in a way that they've never done before. Because Hurdle's got the term. Oh, damn. Where's the dislike button? Hurdle had to waive his no-move clause. He has six more years. He's injured right now. He would be ready for the playoffs. I don't believe this, man. Sounds like I could use a brewski. I know, right? It's noon. <laughs> it's Friday. I've got our, I guess, the jersey stream tonight for our members, by the way. So, uh. It'll be great to, to chat with you then if I'm not in tears. <laughs> Matt Dumba. Ooh, ooh, it's been a rough year for him. 
Still, though, Tampa needed to shake things up defensively. So I don't I don't mind that move for them. Two firsts, heavy retention. I'm talking like two firsts and best prospect they have available. Uh, uh, it wouldn't be the first time. <laughs> I mean, like I, I'm waiting in, in like in, honest. I mean, if it's if these guys are reporting it, the uh, you know Chris Johnston, Elliot Friedman, it's like yo, it's it's happening, right? It's just I'm just waiting now. I have to accept reality, but I hope that on the other side. Swipe two massively talented teams from their own division. Exactly. Says so Sasquatch, uh, Kraken, Kraken account there. I'm just waiting for the other half of the truth. And that better be some good, goddamn good news, honestly. Duclair's a big loss. Um, I mean, the guy's 28 years old. I don't think he was part of the future, but like he's the teammates loved him. And he also said after he was dealt that he's not opposed to re-signing with the Sharks. So that's fine. Also, like uh, the Sharks picking up Clint Costin, 24-year-old. Um, I, I liked what he did in the playoffs two years ago uh, when he was with the Oilers. I think that's he was then. So there's Hannafin. I wonder what kind of... God dang it. Uh, Parseval, what up? Duclair, Tampa Bay. Yeah, yeah. Tampa needed to... I think I think uh, Julian Breezeball, I, I do... You know, I have my criticisms of recent moves he's made, but I think that, that, that it's been a good, uh, good deadline for him. I think... With the limited resources that Tampa has, I think he actually did pretty well. Uh, I love the three moves we made, but Hannafin and Hurdle were building were future building blocks, whereas Mantha could be just a rental. Yeah, I can't I can't really see it any other way. Um, although, well, yeah, because I know it wasn't were the Knights reported to be discussing an extension with Hannafin, but they just haven't reported what that would be. I, I think that's what I heard. I have a feeling the other side of the trade won't be fun to see as a Sharks fan. Yeah, yeah. Um, CJ, what time is the deadline? It's actually now. So it was 3 Eastern, but of course, we're still waiting to see if anything from the front office's uh, queue of, of calls, right? That always comes like it's a bit of a log jam toward the end there. So there could be a couple other announcements, and certainly we're waiting on one that's massive. Jesus Christ. Is this what is this is it is this it? A first next year, David Edstrom, their first rounder for last year. Sharks retain 17% of hurdle salary. That's six years, a third and a no. That's that's not enough. That's not enough. That can't be. A first and a prospect, and you're hanging on to some salary. That's not enough. I know that Hurdle isn't the future of this team by any means, but that's not that's not enough. Uh, a Kale uh, Shalin? Oh no, I I didn't. I only I mostly just chose guys who were like full time NHLers. I have a couple of kind of like fringe players on there. Tarasenko's already in talks to be extended by the Panthers. That's um. That's a little surprising. Yeah, you get to keep your 2024 first rounder. So it hasn't been, uh, they haven't actually coughed it up to the uh, Flames, huh? It's going to be like, yeah, I know, six years of salary retention. That's, that's monster. It's almost like, that's even, it's not worse. Yeah, it's it's about as much as they were going to hang on to uh, with Carlson. So like they're they're holding on to both deals for three more years, and then they have three more years of hurdle after that. I don't even know, man. This is just... This is just... I, I have no words for it, honestly. It's Vegas's first... Absolutely horrid. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's at the very end of the round, right? I mean, assuming the Golden Knights make a deep run, because there's no excuse, whoever is on LTIR or not, there's no excuse to not at least be in the conference final this year. House and family in Florida. That is true. Yeah, good point. Good point. You can have Edstrom. I don't know anything about him. 
what's going on with Vegas? Someone mentioned they're getting away with cap circumvention again. Well, don't forget, I mean, like LTIRs, it's not like it's, it's not like uh, they're the only team that can take advantage of it. I think that people, you know, I don't I don't want to like beat a dead horse, but it, like people are saying like the timing of when these players are on LTIR and the timing of them returning to the playoffs is what people are, you know, fussy about, I guess. Cap <laughs> Nick. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. I cannot believe this. I'm still waiting to see if there's any sort of Corey Masisic, who used to be the um, the Athletics uh, beat reporter for the Sharks, says that this is actually the best trade by a seller. I just I don't think it's I don't think it's enough. And again, that's we're looking at their first rounder for next year, right? They have Eichel and Car William Carlson. Yeah, yeah, William Carlson's your third line center, and Chandler Stevenson. Jonah Gajevich. Didn't Chicago do it with Kane? Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I think there was some sort of LTIR there, right? I know that, like, the, obviously the Lightning have done it before. The Sharks are playing. Oh, last night was their 25th hundred game in franchise history. Jordan Eberle didn't get traded. I know that he was talked about uh, going into this week. Yeah. So the Sharks are uh, retaining one more year of Brent Burns at, uh, I forget, it's like 2.3 million. Three more years of Eric Carlson at 2 million. And now six years of Tomas Hurdle. The cap is rising. That's true. But once the Sharks have finished retaining Burns and then Carlson, that's when we're starting to talk about hopefully, hopefully the Sharks as a good team, right? So they'll be a little bit weighed down by this at worst. I still think that that's not enough return, though, for, for that much salary. Two firsts. Weeks said that Vegas gave the Sharks two firsts. Not from what... Um, I can't remember if that was Drager. But no, I only saw one first in that return. So I'm, I want to see the official trade call. Donnell, hey, what's going on, man? At least the Rangers were active, right? They made some moves. Jack Roslevic joins them. Kind of a fall from, not a fall from grace, but he's kind of slipped in his uh, career, right? Chad Riedel on defense. Wenberg, acquisition for them. The return seems meh. The first this year could easily be 20 to 32. That's what I think, too. I don't D I DJF about the thirds, right? Retention, though, for six years. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, here I thought I was going to be all, all cheerful. And as soon as I'm about to start my stream, then this happens. Boston wanted to trade Olmark to L.A., uh, yeah, I mean, the Bruins sounds like they had a deal on the table to move Olmark to the Kings that didn't end up crossing the finish line. I wonder if that would have involved, um, that would have involved Dubois, but that would, I would think that'd be very difficult. Uh, it was nice to finally see future considerations traded. Yeah, I know, I know, Rick, that's uh, shocking, man. Again, like Hurdle wasn't part of the solution once we're actually you know, back into being a competitive team. He's not necessarily part of that, but Tommy Hurdle's like to a lesser extent from what we saw with Jumbo and even Brent Burns, Hurdle is Hurdle's an icon to the Sharks, to the to the community. He absolutely is. He he's an icon. He's you know, he's the most beloved shark over the last, you know, several years, honestly. Wild um Trading Connor Dewar to the Leafs. Droid Ghost. Ghost. Just Ghost. Or Ghost. 
Favorite trade? Ah, <laughs> uh, boy. Um, well, Gensel to the Hurricanes. That's my favorite trade. Because uh, I love seeing Don Waddell actually do something at the deadline. Let me uh, write that in then, uh, Ghost. Uh, so Connor Dewar, Dewar, I don't know if it's with one N or two, but unless it's Conor. Uh, Conor the Barbarian. Uh, Connor Dewar, a forward of some degree from uh, from Minnesota, you're saying, to um, Toronto? All right, let me get that updated. Do my fancy color coding. Just do that. There we go. Oh, keep me posted here, guys. Keep me posted. Curse. Wow. But that's that's a three average for, for Olmark, right? Yeah, Connor Dewar to Toronto. There it is. Wow. Yeah, the way Cap Friendly is, is framing that. That's a good way to look at it. <laughs> That's funny. Hey, I, I appreciate you guys hanging out with me here, though. To really have to pay six years. Yep. Six years at, what was that? Like 1.6 million or something like that. 1.7. Dewar's a good fourth liner. And he's going to uh, the Maple Leafs. Whew. Well, hopefully they can get, you know, some some better contributions from down there. But a little bit of scoring punch there is is helpful. But he's that's not necessarily why, he, why he's out there. Leafs made one underwhelming move. I thought they also traded for uh, Joel Edmondson. Yeah, Edmondson, I don't, for those of you who, who are in the analytics crowd, he doesn't. He's not very favorable. Panthers leaving the trade deadline with a million remaining. And that's good. Like, I didn't want to see them really do anything, honestly. Uh, they make two moves, the other one being Kyle Pozo in addition to uh, Vlad Tarasenko. So, yeah, I, I think, well, I agree. I know, right? That's crazy, man. Since the start of last year, gone are Tomas Hurdle, Brent Burns. I, I can't even, like freaking processors right now eric carlson and timo meyer incredible gonna keep refreshing is it the equivalent of brandon crawford leaving the giants no this is way worse way way worse uh, biggest winner of the trade deadline. There you have it. Maybe we'll get the Stanley Cup that we should have had last year. Hurricanes and Golden Knights. Because if there's one team from the East that can beat the Golden Knights at their game, it is it is without question the Hurricanes. Systematically. Rangers, though. Hell of a season. We'll... we'll We'll see if if they get their shot. Brother, what's going on, man? Dude, did you see that? Did you like did you have any idea that that could happen? God, look I mean, look, look at this. That does not look right to me. All right. Uh I get a verbal rundown of trades. Ace of Toronto. The ace of Toronto. So yeah. Tomash Hurdle is a Vegas Golden Knight. Let that sink in. Other big deals today. Connor Dewar is a Maple Leaf coming over from the wild. The Jets traded for Tyler Toffoli from the Devils, and they also got Colin Miller in a separate trade to give them some depth on defense. Jack Roslovic is headed to the New York Rangers, as is defenseman Chad Riedel from the Pittsburgh Penguins. Ben Myers goes from the Avalanche to the Anaheim Ducks, but the Avs were very busy at this trade deadline. We already heard about the one-for-one -one deal involving Casey Middlestead and Bowen Byram. The Avs also getting Sean Walker from the Philadelphia Flyers. 
Uh, somebody had asked what teams didn't do anything. I didn't see a whole lot from the Blackhawks because they had actually signed a couple of their players that I thought would have been trade bait, like Nick Foligno and Jason Dickinson and Peter Morazic, right? Goaltending. This is the other kind of big storyline. Nobody's been dealt other than Jake Allen. Jake Allen goes to the New Jersey Devils. So you have a veteran back there uh, for a team that needed some help between the pipes. Crazy that Vegas is in the second wild card. Not for long. Not for long. It is going to be tough. You mean tough to, uh, are you saying just tough to like move up in the standings? I like, you know, a team who made good moves. I'd have to really assess what they gave up, but it didn't, didn't seem like much. The Oilers getting some defensive depth with Troy Stetcher, adding Adam Henrique and Sam Carrick. Like, I, I think that that's perfect, right? This is a, a team that's been hot ever since they brought in Chris Knobloch for the most part. So you don't want to mess with things all that much. They've figured things out defensively, at least compared to where they were uh, in last postseason. So I, I, I feel good about that. Uh, other teams that didn't do anything. Um, I'm just trying to think here. Uh, so other than Jake Allen, Montreal really didn't didn't do all that much, and that's because a couple of those contracts, like especially a Josh Anderson, or you know, like those those are more difficult to move. So I'm not too surprised to see that. The Ottawa Senators were also pretty quiet. The only big piece was Tarasenko, and then otherwise, I haven't seen another you know. Uh, noteworthy deal from their side. Greer, what are you doing? We are trading two thirds. What? No, I did not see that as part of the deal. Equally, yeah, equivalent of Posey going to the Dodgers. That's 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 better than saying uh, Crawford to the Cardinals, sure, but I don't think it's quite that severe. Posey actually, you know, got championships and won an MVP. So hurdle and are you kidding me right now? The Sharks are trading away two of their own thirds and are getting just a first and a prospect. A good one, sure. This is this is just infuriating, honestly. That's infuriating. Why did they get... Exactly. That's my thought exactly. You can look at it this way. You don't have to love the return that Mike Greer got for these trades, but give the man credit where it's due, making the courageous decision to rip the Band-Aid off. Well, I mean, part of it is just from a, a cap compliance sort of thing. You know, you can't have guys, uh, you know, deep into their careers or in the twilight of the careers, right? Because you've already got Hurdle still making, or excuse me, Couture making $8 million for three more years and Vlasic $7 million for two more years. I think they they buy out Vlasic after next year. I'm I'm pretty sure that's what they'll do. Hurdle is expected to return in the regular season. Yeah, it didn't seem like he was going to be out for the rest of the year. Kelly McCriminal. <laughs> that's pretty good. I don't I don't see how it's ever going to be worth it when you give up your own pair of third rounders. I wanted the, the Sharks to to load up where they didn't have picks. They were missing like a third, they were missing a couple later round picks. I wanted to see those voids filled. Like what we're seeing with Chicago, Arizona, Philadelphia, Calgary, especially Calgary this year. But I we're not getting any of that. This this just it makes me sick, dude. Am I reading that clearly? Yeah. 
Well, at least we're going to be, um, I know that we're going to be consuming salary next year, but we're still going to have one of the greatest amounts of salary cap available at the end of the season. Haven't, haven't had that happen to us in quite some time. God. And, and I'm, I'm looking to see if we have another trade come in here, but I think we might, we might be done. Buyer's market. Yeah, obviously it's a buyer's market. The sellers this year did not get all that much in return, I don't think. And that really surprises me. I thought it was going to be exactly the opposite. Had to make a doer video. <laughs> Stop with the LTCs. Yeah, now the, the our version of LTCs now is salary retention for multiple years. Oh, there's going to be, there will be a video. There's got to be a video on this. I got to make a video on this. I still have 180 people here. I mean, God, ble like, bless you. Thank you so much. As I, as I process this, right? Uh, more trades in the off season. You mean for, uh, for, for which team? Like, like for my team? I wouldn't think anything major, but after seeing this, it's, it's an open canvas. Are you surprised Gibson is still with the Ducks? Great question. Um, no, because the only goaltender to be dealt here was Jake Allen, and I would have thought that someone like you say Soros, um, Jacob Markstrom, maybe even though he had a no move no move clause, I would have thought that like one of those guys could have been on the move go like before this week happened. It really seemed less likely once we got into this week, but I would have thought you would have seen that. I thought you would have seen someone like Capo Kakinen get moved. Uh, maybe Carl Vemelka from the Coyotes, something like that. If if other teams were going after goalies, then like John Gibson, I think maybe someone would have bid on that because he still has a fair amount of deal left on his contract or a term, I should say. Um, so yeah, I'm not all that surprised, honestly. The Leafs gave up a third and a six for Labushkin and a third and a fifth for Edmondson. And Tampa gets a dumbo for a fifth. You can't make this up. Yeah, that's that's a good way to look at it. Granted, uh, it doesn't seem like Dumba's exactly having the best season. It, analytically, though, I've seen that that Labushkin doesn't pl doesn't play out very well from from like those advanced stats. But I've personally liked him. Oh boy! <laughs> You'll need some, and I have some as well. Uh, you know what, man? No, I don't think I need a beer. I don't think I need a beer. This is what I really need. Yep. Yep. Right here, Mike Greer. This is what it's come to, Greasy. Can't believe it. Whiskey. Well, that was also yesterday, but good God. I still want to see the official trade call though, but I, I'm sure that I'm sure that these guys are gonna get it right. Um St. Louis might be has been quiet. That's true, Buchnevich. Great point. Why Axiom? I have no effing clue, man. I have no clue. I'm no clue. Buchnevich, though, yeah, the, the Blues have been quiet. I guess they've decided to kind of stand pat just in case they can make the playoffs with what they have right now. 
Anytime in the den. Oh yeah. Whiskey is there, man. That's it's like the Willy Wonka chocolate factory of whiskey where you're at, man. It was oh, most of the trades were for picks and salary only. And we got a couple of one for ones. Like uh the middle step for Byram trade. That was a fun one. I, I didn't think we'd get to see something like that. So I was I was happy to see that. Uh go blues. <laughs> You're happy that Buchnevich is not leaving. I like the dude a lot. Uh, I really want that t-shirt. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Of course. Of course I can do that. Um, I was totally away from my computer. I didn't even check my phone until like 10 p.m. last night. So I did see that you had messaged me about that. So yes, absolutely. You got it. Uh, so Jacob here, or Jakob, I'm not sure where you're based, um, is a, a winner of a deal that we made because... He called Jake Gensel to Carolina uh, during one of our streams. And I said, I'd hook him up with a t-shirt if he was right. And you are right. And I'm happy to honor that. Uh, Hurdle waived is his no trade clause. He wanted to go there. Hey, no. <sighs> if I knew that I could actually hold on to my salary and because <laughs> Nevada has no income tax versus the Bay Area. I can't fault him for that, honestly. You got to think of him and his family. He's got a young family, cute kids. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna hate on Hurdle, honestly. It's one thing if you do it in free agency, right? Signals the end of Stevenson. Yeah, he's a, a free agent next year. March or so is a free agent next year. Not sure, sure why they went center. Yeah, I don't know if they're gonna do anything w weird and try to make Hurdle a winger because he's played wing before, but it's been a long time. What would LA have to give back to Boston if Ulmerich were there? I don't know. I would have been I would have been interested to see if that involved Dubois. Considering Boston's so weak at center, you know, they lost out on Elias Lindholm. But would they take a flyer on him with his trade restrictions? Would they take a flyer on, you know, what, six more years at $8 million? That, I think that would be kind of stupid of them. But if we're thinking about a big name like Ulmerich, who knows, right? Because center and, and Boston, right? Those those should be going together. Um, and yeah, by the way, and speaking of uh, Discord, just a quick plug. Hey, you're more than welcome to join our Discord community. We have fans of all teams. We've got uh, individual chat rooms or channels, as they're called, for teams. And uh, yeah, it's just a great way to um, get to know folks outside of our, our live streams here. So you are heavily encouraged to join us on there. Uh, you can get a link to that in the video description down below. Flames have one more in the queue. Oh, who would that be then? Who who would that be? I don't know. Sharon Govich? And the arms of an... <laughs> oh, boy. Thanks for making my day, Sharky. Until we move to Quebec. Because uh, I'm curious to see what the Sharks' attendance looks like at the end of the year. With a buzzer beater. Uh, yeah, I might have to switch sports and call it a knockout punch, honestly. Sharon Govich to the Rangers. I like Sharon Govich a fair bit. The tax thing, yeah, yeah. I'm curious to see if, if for any way, Barabanov got traded too because, uh, oh, Pickles. Pickles, man. Flames have one in the queue. Oh, oh, Sarah Valley had said that, huh? Who the F is Vegas getting now, right? Half joking. A PWHL team in the Bay? I bet the PWHL team, if, if they took the ice right now, I bet they could beat the Sharks. It's a little, I know it's super, uh, a bit of a superfluous statement there, or a hyperbolic statement, but that's what it feels like right now. Pat, by the way, Pat Maroon going to Boston is hilarious. I'd like to see Jack Edwards try to do an interview with him. 
I'm looking at the bright side. At least it's money off the books. True. That's true, Ty. 4K there last night. Mostly Islanders fans. Jesus. Yeah. You could always choose Carolina or Seattle as your team. Well, I mean, for the rest of the year, you know. I mean, God. For a while, it's it's been Carolina because, you know, in terms of cheering for somebody. Stone could low-key. Boy. That's something interesting to keep your eye on. But at the same time, he could come back later this season, right? <laughs> Having a Heineken now? Yeah. This is what it looks like to me, Ty. You guys don't... I don't want you guys to have to see this. It's horrifying enough that Tomas Hurdle is a golden knight. Horrifying. Maybe if it maybe if it came like I don't know with two years left on his deal and the Golden Knights were just kicking the tires and <laughs> the tires are not kicked in Las Vegas. They're rigged up to a uh, to a raised up uh, Cadillac Escalade with like. I don't know. I don't. I don't. I, I was thinking about like a Mad Max reference, but anyway, um, that does not involve escalades. But uh, let's see here. Francis already in talks with Maddie Beniers. That's interesting. I, I would think that would be a bridge deal because Beniers has taken a step back uh, this year, offensively at least. <laughs> Dude, these people have been going at it. It's lame. Uh, Tomas Hurdle, number one biggest prospect. Right. David Edstrom is the number one prospect. I'll have to read up on this guy. I need something to get excited about. Flying to San Jose to have a chat with Greer. Yeah, all, all six of us Sharks fans should uh, be picketing outside of SAP Center. If the Sharks don't win the lottery, I know, right? At least we have Pittsburgh's pick, and um, that could be as high as number 11, right? I can't even begin to force yourself into liking the Pat Murray deal. <laughs> oh, I didn't know you were an actual Bruins fan. Yeah, considering uh, your battles with a team like Tampa in the playoffs. Tarasenko and Ocpozo. Yeah, I mean, I, I mentioned this earlier, Axiom, but uh, Florida, they played it just right. You know, you know, give yourself like an, another option or two with how you want to configure your forwards, but don't. Don't swing for the fences. Zito has done that enough already. And, you know, he's found the winning combination. So most complete team uh, in the Eastern Conference. And that and it stays like that. Of when people ate Tide Pods. Oh, God. Thankfully, I never never saw what, what that would be like. Uh, your phone's at 1%. I think my heart's at 1% right now. Okpozo's veteran presence. Yeah, yeah, that's that's perfectly fine. They didn't give up all that much overall. Uh, so Bill Zito uh, in the running for executive of the year, unless um, if the Knights repeat, I mean, I know it's regular season awards, but um, Jesus Christ, did Sharky like my tweet? Not yet. You will, Sharky, you will. Oh, God, Sharky. Oh, wait, that was from yesterday. Uh, yep. It's like Indiana Jones drinking the blood in Temple of Doom. Uh, ESPN is showing the trade deadline special. Oh, okay. Well, it'd be I'd be really distracted if I tried wa like watching that. I guess I could probably plug in my my headphones here, but yeah, parts of all. If you're a Stars fan, if you're an Oilers fan, if you're a Sharks fan, if you're an Avalanche fan, if you're a Panthers fan, if you're a Jets fan, <laughs> Jesus. Oh man. Hurricanes have no change to their deadline cap space after the trade. That's impressive. <laughs> Katie Goss. <laughs> That's funny. So, yeah, to Foley. Toffoli is probably going to be one of those really good acquisitions for uh, that doesn't get talked about enough. I think poor Tyler Toffoli. And I mean, especially for uh, 
he and his wife because it's like they they have to keep moving uh, countries like Tivoli. Remember, L.A. goes to Vancouver, then goes all the way across the country to, to Montreal. Then they go back west to Calgary. Then they go to Jersey, and now they got to go to Winnipeg. So, best of luck with you and your uh, and your transition t- from the east coast of the states to uh, still probably the coldest place to be in in the continent right now. Uh, that's still inhabited. Embarrassing being a Rangers fr- fan, really. You you think he worsened the team? I don't know. I thought he, meant, he you know adding a couple of decent complimentary pieces, Roslevic. Uh, Rui, uh, Rui, I, I know these aren't like earth shattering. The Wenberg deal, though, I thought that was a, a very fair exchange personally. What about Granlund? Did he get moved? No, he did not. I think it's because, I mean, it's crazy because I thought that if he got traded, then the Sharks would have to retain some salary next year because he's on the books for $5 million. Uh, and now, uh, obviously, that'd be impossible because the Sharks have already, have already, um, occupied all three of their salary retention points for the next season. And in 2027, they're still going to be working on Hurdle and Carlson. You saw the Buffalo Sabres last night? You uh, went to the game? Um, so you got to see uh, Bowen, Bowen Byram, right? Rangers did little moves here and there. Islanders kept quiet and did nothing. Yeah, yeah, the Islanders, I, I that's a good point. They didn't do a damn thing, and that's not going to help them. They still might be able to to squeak into the playoffs if they can, uh, you know, land in third in their division. But then they get the Hurricanes in round one, and uh, they don't want that. Got slower and older. Uh, yeah, getting Bucinavich would have been that would have been fun to see him back there. Honestly, Byram got his first goal. Oh, really? Yeah, I didn't see any action. Well, I didn't see any. Uh, I didn't watch any games last night, so. Uh-huh. Avalanche followers since 2016. Oh, since 2016, really? So you were you came in at the at the very end of the dark days. Interesting. I bet you wouldn't have expected them to turn things around so quickly, right? Stars and Oilers. Oh, interesting. Talk about a couple teams that used to uh, have some good battles back in the day. Who knows? Who knows? You roll the dice. Uh, you know, 200 or 300 times. That could be your Eastern Conference final, right? But you need Ottinger to get hot. You need uh, Skinner just to, you know, stay the course like the Skinner he's been this year. Vetrano not getting moved. Yeah. Said no. Less than two firsts. Really? Uh, what was that, Donnell? Devils getting... Uh, oh, you didn't like uh, Devils getting Allen. I mean, he's not going to get them into the playoffs at this point. I got to see what the return was for Toffoli to really make some judgment on that. Vegas taking a hard look at Stemniak and Brian Gionta. That's funny. And yeah, here, here, here's this one for Danelle if you're looking at my screen, man. Kim, once again, right on, right on the money. Choose your character. <gasps> yep. And you still have Pierre Engvall for like, what, five more years after this? Congra- congratulations. Check Twitter. Uh, what? What now? Nikita Hotiuk? Really? Really? That's interesting. Are we selling? Oh, shit. We better be selling high on the guy. It's got to be like, come on. At least a, Calgary has a stockpile of picks just from the last couple weeks. Like, get greedy, Greer. Nikita Ohotiuk, really? That now Ohotiuk came over in the Timo Meyer uh, deal last year. Oh, oh, excuse me. Yeah, Ohotiuk, defenseman <sighs> to Calgary. God, please. Let's see what comes of this mid rounder. It's got to, like you. you it's probably going to be like a, a fifth or a sixth. But this better be better. Still waiting on Barabanov. He was told he was going to be moved. Right, right, right. Was starting to slide on the team's death chart. 
Yeah, and then the Sharks getting um, a, a fairly good defensive prospect from the Lightning, which uh, that does kind of please me, but it has to pan out somewhat. Because other than that, you're just getting a third for Duclair, and I think you could have gotten more. So, <laughs> One thing I got to say about Greer, it's it's – turning really into a roller coaster with him because I got to be I got to say I when I look at the um the Timo Meyer deal last year the, the Sharks got a much better return than any trade we've seen this year for Timo Meyer so I gotta I gotta chalk that up as a win for now and I also have to ch and they got Quentin Musty as part of it and the Carlson deal I I'm actually impressed with what Greer did with that honestly because I thought we were going to be eating more of Carlson's salary so I'll give him credit there. This is this is horrifying though. Chris is the better GM than than Mike. Uh, would I be afraid to play the Rangers? Don't go by two years ago. Um, if Matt Rempe is going to push us around, us who am I? I'm, I'm it's not even my favorite team, but yeah, if he pushes us around, like if. The Rangers can be deadly on the power play. Kane still can can kill penalties pretty well. I think it would. I still I think that this is one where like the Hurricanes can win it, unless like, you know, you 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 start agitating and pushing them around. I think that's a good way to beat them, no matter which team you are facing. You know, facing them. So, I don't think it would be the scariest of matchups. I think the Hurricanes. You know, I, I've seen them beat Florida, and I've seen them do that by the skin of their teeth this year. So I'm still more afraid of a team like that than, than the Rangers at this point. Although the Hurricanes are a team that can pump 45 shots on goal and score only once, and the Rangers have really good goaltending. So that does scare me, yeah. <laughs> Looks like Rampy's going to go back to Harvard. Oh, okay, okay. Get some Panda Express. Uh, hurdled at Vegas. Um, I'm... I'm like internally fuming at the lack of an adequate return, honestly. Unless this guy Edstrom in their prospect, you know, coming into the prospect pool, unless this guy is is just a stud. But um, getting one first rounder and the Sharks had to send two third rounders back to Vegas and retain some of Hurdle's salary for six years, that is just unfathomable. Like I can't, man. That's just horrible. But I want to see the official trade call because I have not seen that. We're still looking at uh, the possibility of Nikita Ohotiuk going to the Calgary Flames from the Sharks. Still 180 people here, man. You're wonderful. Thank you. Oh, you're okay. That, we were talking about the Toffoli deal uh, for a third and a second in the. Okay, that that to me seems like a pretty darn fair exchange. That's a fair exchange. Uh, based based on the like, if we were looking more at last year, I would think that it, if you traded Toffoli, which which did happen last deadline, no, no, it happened in the off season. I would have thought it would have involved a first, like going into this year's deadline. But just given the market this year. I think that's a fair return to the Devils. Uh, willing to take Dubois to the Bruins if it means getting DeBrusque off your team. Yeah, yeah. DeBrusque always, always in the rumor mill, isn't he? Uh huh. Oh, I forgot when Stone and uh, Hurdle fought each other. Vulgar display of hurdle, man. I'm going to miss that. <laughs> yeah. We'll, we'll look at the... Uh, we'll anticipate the official trade calls on these. Just trying to see if there's any. Oh, geez. I I gotta look away when I see this. Can can you guys stomach that? Can you stomach that right now? Jeez, Louise. 
That is terrifying for me to see. That's him. And I, and I wish, I wish Hurdle a, a speedy recovery and, you know, I hope, I hope he has an awesome time out there. When you love someone, you set them free, but, but shit, you at least get something in return, huh? All right. I'm just going to do a quick update on my thumbnail here. Hold tight guys. Unbelievable, man. So what, anybody got any fun plans for the weekend? I, I sincerely mean that. As I update my, my video thumbnail here, or my stream thumbnail. Hmm. What had I done there? <laughs> ah, there it is. By the way, you know, one thing I didn't talk about was uh, Yevgeny Kuznetsov uh, going to the... Um, Kuznetsov going to the to the Hurricanes. And I think Washington's retaining some salary, so... Nice job by the by uh, Don Waddell on that front. I'd like. I mean, I hope Kuzi can can come back alive. I, he doesn't have to be 2018 Kuznetsov, but like, just you know, get it, him getting a change of scenery. I hope I hope that that really does open the door to him being able to contribute for the team. That'd be sweet. That'd be that'd be awesome. Where's the uh, the export? Oh, okay, okay. Share with others. Oh, download. Okay. Ba -ba -ba. Just do that. That should be fine. And... Oh, okay. You're going to be working? Oh, okay. Well, hey, I mean, good thing you, you were off for the trade deadline. That's always good. Paul, what's going on? Uh, what the Canes lineup is going to be? Yeah. Now, now that we have, uh, of course, you have Aho, you have Kuznetsov, you have, of course, Kokanyemi, Drury. Uh, as your your centers, right? Stall, Jordan Stall, of course. Can't forget him. So yeah, I, I'm I'm curious to see that. Cortana to Vegas for two first rounders. If if I had to send Cortana to actually get a good haul for Tomas Hurdle, nah, nah, I never would. Oh my god. You guys can't even see her, but she's got her head on her blanket right now. It's pretty pretty cute. Sahil, oh jeez. I'm I'm just Thank God I have you guys. Otherwise, I'd go punch something. Or I'd I'd actually open this up and pour some down my throat. What did you miss? Oh, God. Umraj, I, I, I cannot believe I'm saying this. Tomash Hurdle, who had six years left on his contract, has been traded to the Vegas Golden Knights. And really, going back to the Sharks is not all that much. We we had heard that like Hurdle could have been a trade candidate to a team like the Bruins before. I never thought I'd see him in this uniform. So I'm, I'm just going to quickly update my uh, thumbnail here, assuming I can. Yeah, I might need a trade beer. Unbelievable, man. Uns unspeakable almost. Let me just load this up again. There we go. There it is. How to describe this? I have no words. I, I do, but not easy when you're a fan of this team. Not these days. Uh, about MLB jerseys and the see-through pants? Yeah, man. Uh, Aesthetics uh, said that they've also seen what the new jerseys are going to look like for NHL next year. He said there, there is a bit of a difference between them and Adidas, but they didn't, they didn't reveal any details for that. Um, I'm not particularly excited for that either, but, uh, I'll, I'll really make a judgment on it when I see it. It's just that not the best, not the best look right now. Okay. 49% said I need a beer. 31% said beer plural. I'm going to get a beer. I need a beer. Uh, homeboy needs a beer. Hold up, guys.
And we're back. Still 187 of you guys. Really, it's it's cool that even in this time, and no matter who you cheer for, that you know, folks still want to want to hang out here with me and Cortana here. So so really thank you. If you know, and and this is a beer that I've always really liked. Uh, I know it's the Sam Adams, it's not the most crafty, but this is a great like holiday beer. It's called Old Fezziwig. It's a kind of a spiced ale, I guess. And uh, you pull this out during uh, times of celebration. And as horrifying as this news is that uh, Tomas Hurdle not only has been traded, but has been traded to the Vegas Golden Knights, I still have something to celebrate because here we are just having a laugh, shedding a tear, cracking a beer for something that we actually love. So to you, the Twisters, I say cheers. Thank you. Thank you so much for, for being here with me. Definitely a bitter taste in my mouth, but uh, it's not its not a double IPA or anything like that. Cortana agrees. Uh, spiked strawberry peach. Ooh, that sounds that sounds uh, refreshing. I heard it, by the way, I know you're in Iowa, but um, I heard that in Minnesota recently it was like 70 degrees or like a few days ago. That's crazy, man. Cheers, Billy. Cheers, man. Or as they would say in Czech, the home country of Tomas Hurdle, Nezdravi. Can't wait for guests of the jersey. I yeah. So what I need to do is probably I need to make a, what will probably be a, a rant. I need to s- just film that off the cuff and just go to town. And then uh, what? Wait, did the Sharks trade him? That's it is true, Riley. It is it is a confer. Well, we need to hear it from the teams themselves, but it is a trade that it has gone down. Uh, a conditional fifth round selection for a hotel, of course. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, the deadline has passed, right? Nikita Hotiuk was a second round draft pick too. While moving two thirds in twenty twenty five and twenty seven. God, dude. Live look at Barabanov. That's funny. Uh, you will get him a cup. You're certainly playing like uh, you're pl- you're uh, setting that expectation. That's for sure. But uh, I prefer one go to um, one of the older Sharks veterans at least this year. So Brent Burns is at the top of my queue. I know Rocket Ball like. The crazy thing to me is that the Sharks are sending two third rounders as part of this for and only getting a first and a prospect. I, I don't want to downplay that. They're getting Vegas's first rounder from last year. Like, I don't want to downplay that. Uh, we're no Barbanov. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm still waiting to see because, like, I, I saw, you know, like a one of the big sources out there said that they will trade him, but we just didn't know what team it would be. So, in other words, the, shark would, the Sharks would just ship him off for – Probably like future, I don't know about future considerations, but like a seventh or something like that to even go on the Reddit Sharks. But yeah, turn big face to you. Yeah, now now you get to enjoy Tomas Hurdle on the ice. Jesus. I can hear a Minnesota Vikings rain coming from me. The thing is that I usually know how to subdue myself. And, and you know, I know that like my perspective eventually can shift on this thing. But uh, yeah, uh, Canucks fan. Yeah, what's going on, Andrew? Uh, good for Carolina on getting Gensel. I think everybody's terrified all that talent that Vegas is bringing in. Like I said, man, like I said, we might get the Stanley Cup that we should have had last year. Hurricanes versus Golden Knights. Because if you want one team to dethrone the defending champions, that is exactly the team that can do it. Because Vegas, they know how to counter. They know how to position themselves well as a team is trying to move the puck out of its zone. The Hurricanes are, are a harder team to take it away from. They have the puck on a string, and even though they don't put too many in the net, they know how to play up-tempo with uh, a multitude of players on their roster. And and yeah, I, I could see it, man. I, I think that they would match up well. But I don't know if the Hurricanes can actually get to the final this year, honestly. With Gensel, I hope that he he's a factor, but uh, losing some size and and 
pissant presence from Michael Bunting. I think that's you can't understate that because the Hurricanes don't have a lot of that themselves. Svetikov has got to be that guy. They need they need to do what you saw from the Golden Knights in the playoffs last year, where you saw Eichel throwing his body, when you saw Stone throwing his body coming back from injury. That's what Carolina needs to do if they want to win. Uh, no, Tomasha, I would no. I, I look, I wouldn't say that Tomash is now a villain for the Sharks. No, he's not. Not not like that. If it was free agency, that would be a totally different picture. So I'll come to his defense there. Uh, will the Vikings move Jefferson? No, no. As I, I can't see that happening unless he doesn't like uh, the situation for quarterback. Because uh, I, I, I don't see Cousins returning. And that's going to help with the contract for him. I don't see Daniel Hunting, uh, Hunter coming back. Another Sharks trade? Did, did another one just come in? Or are you talking about the uh, Nikita Hotiak one with uh, Calgary? 195 people. What, our numbers are going up? God. Means a lot. Thank you, guys. Um, so for anyone new here, we're going to be doing... Oh, I just wanted to see if there was anything new there. Uh, we're going to be doing streams for the big moments throughout the rest of the season and in the offseason. So playoffs will be here. Uh, we'll, we even do live play-by-play commentary if, if you so fancy. Hey, that helps, that helps people out there who don't actually have like a TV or streaming plan. So I'm happy to do that. We also uh, will do something for the draft. The draft lottery is going to be huge for us, right? Because at, for me as a Sharks fan, actually here, I got to, sorry, Hurricanes. I got to put on my Sharks cap. There we go. All right. For me as a Sharks fan, um, that's the day that I look forward to the most. It's the it's the um, the draft lottery to see if we can win the first overall pick, one. And two, I look forward to the draft itself because even if we don't win the draft lottery, we have two first-round picks. So that's good. What kind of Coke beer? Baller Ben? I love that. <laughs> um, it is uh, Sam Adams Old Fezziwig Ale, which is uh, like a seasonal holiday release, but I saw it in... My, in my uh, grocery store, and I, I do love this beer. I've had it before. So if I celebrate anything right now, I celebrate 195 people being here and, uh, you know, enjoying hockey together, even through the uh, most difficult of times. Beautiful out. Yeah, Riley. It totally is, man. Uh, but but my day, you know what, though, Riley, but my day, this news aside, my day's been rocking. I've had a I've had an awesome day. If Jefferson goes, yeah, I can't stomach Jefferson and Hurdle leaving. Um, I don't know. I just might quit YouTube. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, the Bruins have won all four meetings against the Leafs. Yeah, I mean, and that's what we could possibly look forward to in the first round. Drury couldn't get, get Hurdle for what Vegas gave, gave up. Chris, Oh, Chris Drury. God, I would have much rather seen him as a Ranger. Who knows? I, um, let's see if there's anything else to report here, perhaps. Devils are trading Vitek Vanacek to the Sharks for Kapo Kekkonen. Really? What? What? Kapo Kekkonen is a, is a free agent. What about uh, Vitek Vanacek? Let me check on that. What what the hell's Greer doing? We're <laughs> no no cap friendly. I don't I don't want to see your ads or your full screen ads. Uh, Vitek Vanacek. Wait, why is oh he been on injured reserve? Okay, what <sighs> right? Vanacek has. One more year left on his deal, and Kakinen's a free agent. Okay, so the Sharks basically, they send Kakinen off, and then Vanacek is going to be one of our two goaltenders next year. Okay, that's that's fine. I wish we could, I don't know, we'll have to see an official trade call. If we got like a fifth or a sixth rounder as part of it, then, then fine. There's nothing wrong about this. I think it's just kind of odd, honestly. Celebration drinks tonight for the Canes. All right, man. And uh, for any Hurricanes fans uh, hanging out with us on the stream, you might have a chance to hang out with me at the end of this month because I will be in Raleigh for the March 28th game against the Detroit Red Wings. And there's a possibility of me um, doing some sort of like a 
informal meetup at like a bar or like bar and restaurant or something like that. So if you're around, uh, yeah, feel free to, uh, well, first of all, um, just uh, be on the lookout for a, an announcement about that. I'll do it through here, social media, right? So yeah, that'd be, that'd be wonderful. Um, two more years for the rebuild. Uh, yeah, I mean, celebrating is part of it, right? But the thing is, like, what if we don't have enough draft picks to, to help with that, right? Anyway, I, I'm, I'm, I think I'm looking forward a little bit too much. I wonder what happened to all five of those hockey. Yeah, I, Zachary, I'm, I, I'm not going to speculate any further. I, I'm just waiting for like, right. Once, once the trial happens, right, and then, then we can make conclusions about that. Uh, yeah, I get it because he's hurt. Well, the thing is, is that he is expected to return before the season ends, though. So that's I I don't think that you can I, I understand where you're coming from I just don't think that like that can really be a, a justification as why the Sharks send two third rounders back to the Golden Knights and only get one first rounder in addition to the prospect I know that but and retain salary on hurdle too so puzzling puzzling to say the least uh Smith uh Smith is staying in school oh Will Smith ah uh, yeah I because I know that we got Ty Smith or no, the Canes got Ty Smith. I'm starting to juggle teams. Um, uh, yeah, so Kakinen and Jake Allen is going to be the uh, tandem. Yeah, don't don't let the numbers fool you on uh, Kakinen. He's overall had a pretty good year for the Sharks. Um, much better than last year, I got to say. All right, well, that means I got to um, go back to my uh, trade board here because now I got another Sharks trade to call in here. Oh, boy. Uh, oops. So the Sharks and Devils doing... Making a deal themselves. So, Capo, Kakinen. And that's one of the few goaltenders. Uh, Jersey making the only two real goaltender moves. Uh, trade difficulty on hard. The Knights were the only team to offer a first. Uh, Kakinen going to New Jersey. You want to cry? Hey, like I said, don't let the numbers fool you. But uh, I don't know if you guys need to hire any new, new goaltending coaches. Something, something different has to happen. If that's their tandem, that's... That's not going to help them next year to, you know, get back into a top three spot in the division necessarily. I expect them to be better next year. Is Blackwood done for the year? I don't know. I don't know. I can see the Canes flying past the Rangers. And the Canes, in addition to, uh, I know they lost Bunting, but uh, who else did they add? Did they, did Carolina get anybody else besides Gensel, like at the NHL level? I don't think so. Yeah, other, other than that, they've been... Uh, pretty uh, relaxed. I totally missed that. I, I thought we we got this piece. I know. That's initially what was reported. And then whoever it was, like uh, Johnston, maybe Chris Johnston said, uh, I correct that. The, the Sharks are the ones sending the two third rounders. And I was like, what? What, what is it? What's, what's up with that? Like, how, how do you, how do you, that's what you do to negotiate a deal for um, who's been the face of your franchise the past couple years, honestly, you know? Uh-huh. So I, I still have to figure out if there's going to be somebody else coming in. Vanacek's season hasn't been as bad as maybe it's made out to be. But that, oh yeah, because that's a weighted three-year average. Gensel and Ty Smith. Yeah, Spokane Chief uh, Ty Smith. That's right. He had, he had that like rookie year with the Devils, right? Where he uh, kind of tore it up and then he just kind of fell off immediately. I don't care how much of a tire fire this team is. How do you move hurdle? Don't care what type of return you get. Well, I'll, I'll, I mean, if, if you if you move him, there has to be a much, much greater barrier to trade him. Right. Um. Yeah. To move Vanacek's contract. And the Sharks can take it on too. Because you know from a salary standpoint. They'll be just fine. Uh, Chelius's jersey retirement was amazing. Yeah. I, God. Long time coming huh? Uh, who else is going to join the Raptors in the United Center? Taves. Uh, Kaner. Crawford. I would think. I would think Duncan Keith would also be there. Um, I, I don't know if that opens the door for like Brent Seabrook. But uh I, I personally wouldn't think so, but Keith, I would imagine being one of them too. Who's the prospect in the trade to San Jose? Um, for uh, for uh, Tomas Hurdle, it's uh, 
I think his name is uh, David Enstrom or David Enstrom. David Edstrom. Right. So let's take a look at him, right? I don't know too much about him. He's a center, which is kind of weird because the Sharks, the center depth is pretty darn good already. <laughs> Pardon. Uh, he was the 32nd overall pick last year by the Golden Knights. Listed at 6'3 and a buck 90. He's only 19 years old, so he could certainly put on some muscle. And right now he's playing. Uh, he played with Frolunda and, of course, you know, in a pro men's league, you're not going to score a whole lot when you're um, just breaking into that, right? He's played 53 games for Frolunda so far. Yeah. That's the return. 200 people. Right on, right on. You could, oh, yeah. You, you said I didn't read that earlier, Victor. Uh, you can see the Canes flying past the Rangers in the Metro. I, I just don't know if there's going to be quite enough time for that. You know, the Hurricanes are going to reconfigure their power play uh, in, in addition to their just regular forward lines. So that might take a bit of an adjustment. It's not inconceivable by any means, um, but uh, I, I'm, I'm not completely sold on that. I, I mean, hell. who If you're a Canes fan, who would you rather face in the first round? Would you rather face the Flyers? the Islanders, or would you rather face a wild card like the Red Wings or maybe the Lightning? Solid third line potentials. What? Yeah. Yeah. Why would we, do, why would we do that? We've already got Philip Bistet, Thomas Bordalo. Like, why would we do that? Like I'm, I'm talking about, you know, guys who are going to slide down into that point on the depth chart, right? Where they're projected. For sure, the Islanders. If if you're a Canes fan, I mean, yeah, we already we already saw that that they could actually beat a team with really good goaling. Um, another Sharks trade? Are you talking about the uh, Kakinen trade or the Ohotiuk trade? Or there's even another trade? Uh, apparently, this could not be the end of it for uh, for my career. Yep, they swapped goalies. Still no Barabanov trade. Oh, okay. Devin Cooley. We've acquired a seventh rounder. What is with Greer trading away his seventh rounders like this? Doug Wilson was like the king at, at making use of seventh rounders, like Justin Braun and Joe Pavelski. Interesting. Uh, I don't I don't know who Devin Cooley is, though. He's a goalie. That's all I know. And it's not Devin Levi. Devin Cooley is from Los Gatos, though. That's a suburb of San Jose. That's actually where uh, Netflix is based out of. So that's cool. But uh, at some point, like, don't we get some seventh rounders ourselves? Uh, San Jose is making a couple of goalie moves, right? Oh, he, he plays for Rochester. Okay. That's cool. Actually, uh, somebody I, I frequently run into in town here is from Rochester. Sharks are busy today. Busy, but not necessarily in a way that uh, I wanted to see. And that's for sure. We just got VTech. Yeah, I, I I haven't seen him this year. I know that the fans in Jersey haven't been particularly happy with him. But what I like about Vanacek is like his story arc. The guy was never expected to be like a bona fide number one. He's always had to like, you know, in previous seasons with Jersey and Washington before that, he had to step in to uh, relieve the starter for injury or, you know, for performance reasons. And then he would play really well for a long period of time. Eventually that would, you know, kind of, he would tail off from there. But uh, I, when a goalie can do that, that's pretty rad. Did Greer drink a little bit too much? Last night? Uh, he's on a bender. He never stopped. Hockey trades are odd. Oh, there's a lot of swapping third and fourth line players. Yeah. I mean, like most of these deals, right. There are only a, a handful of players who are, you know, actual like top six forwards or the only top pairing defenseman really is what Bowen uh, Bowen Byron could be a top pairing defenseman on some teams maybe uh but uh you know Hannafin that's about it oh boy this does not make me particularly happy the latest being yeah so there's still a possibility that somebody something could get called in but remember, 
these trades that we've seen during this stream are not that's before we actually get the official official announcement from the teams so could there still be a, like could there be a discrepancy what we've seen already there could be it's not super likely but there could be is pulling a u in nhl 24 more like mccrimmon is oh boy so in other words if i make this rant for the channel i'm gonna wait until i actually see the official announcement or like cap friendly if cap friendly reports it i'm good anthony bovilli by the way um a player I used to like a fair bit uh, moved from the Blackhawks to the Predators, but um, we'll see if he if he enjoys a change of scenery. But he's moved a couple teams over the last couple seasons. It's kind of disappeared since then. Ahotiuk was oh yeah yeah of course. Vegas has now the opportunity to activate over seventeen million dollars off injury reserve and in long term IR once the season ends. No surprise there. Yevgeny Kane's nets off. Nice, Steve. Yep. That's a very fair analogy, I suppose. Who knows? Maybe the Golden Knights uh, just didn't even want to get Jake Ensel in the first place. Uh, talking about the hurdle trade right now. Oh, yeah. Are we uh, Blind Doom? What's going on? Yeah. Uh, the aptly named Blind Doom. That's how I would describe today. Everything was peachy, going very well. And then out of nowhere, I just got uh, bamboozled, to say the least. But thanks for hopping in here to say hi. Uh, out of every trade we've seen the past few days, who is your overall winner? The Jets, Monahan and Toffoli, Dark Horses to help them win now. Hey, you know, that's good. I, I know that they gave up a first to get... Monahan, but the good thing was that the Tyler Toffoli trade for me uh, was very fair, and getting some defensive depth never hurts either. So yeah, I think the Jets low key had themselves a good deadline. I think the Oilers had a pretty good deadline as well, getting Henrique and also getting um, a little bit of defensive insurance, uh, even if like those guys are just seventh defensemen for them essentially. So yeah, not bad um, overall winners. I think Carolina. Getting a big fish like Gensel, like that's a big difference maker. Even though, I, and, and I think that getting Kuznetsov will be interesting. So I think that that they could be in the running for that. Of course, the Golden Knights, because again, you look at at their trades, they did not give up very much for for Hurdle. They did not give up very much for Hannafin. They did not give up very much for Anthony Mantha. So if you want to compete for a Stanley Cup, and you want to do that in a uh, quicker turnaround than you would think, given the injuries that they've had. That's that's incredible what they just did. It really is. Uh, Devin Cooley from Buffalo. And hey, apparently he's from Los Gatos. Yeah, that's kind of cool. I guess, who knows, maybe we tried to get Dustin Wall for uh, Nikita Hotiuk. You miss Owen Nolan. Yeah, my best friend got to meet him yesterday. Isn't that cool? Uh, so yeah, man, that's tough. That's a tough day. Uh, Colorado, um, I don't know about, uh, of them being like an elite winner out of this group, but they did a lot. That's for sure. Getting Casey Middlestat and Sean Walker. Leaving behind Bowen Byram is not uh, something to scoff at by any means. But um, if they think that these guys are could be integrated uh, fluidly into their system, that's good for them. Not to mention Landeskog is back to skating, even though it'll still take some time before he can get back out there if that's to happen. Um, in the rest of this uh, season or postseason. Uh, did I ever get to meet... Uh, oh, Devin Cooley. Yeah, there you go. Uh, did I ever meet Sharky? Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I had a birthday and took some friends to a Sharks game one time, and uh, he, he paid me a visit. It was awesome. Uh, and then at Fan Fest, it was funny because, you know, everybody, you know, lines up on this main line, and then you get funneled uh, toward the gates, right? The, the individual doors to the arena. So I got to be at the front of one of the doors. And then Sharky came out, and <laughs> he pushed me out of the way to say hi to everybody. And then he, he just, then he gave me a hug and then, and you know, like walked me inside. It was pretty funny. Return of Cheyenne, what's up? One of your favorite sharks ever. Yeah. I mean, without Sharky, I, I mean, sharks were my favorite animal as a kid. So when I learned that there was, 
this giant shark. I didn't care about hockey itself. And then I was like, wait, they fight each other? I'm like, God, I love this game. Dustin, hey, what's going on, man? Uh, how would I rate the Panthers deadline picks? I think I think Zuzer did just what he needed to do, right? I know that Jaws had talked about this uh, leading up to the deadline. You know, don't, don't overthink this. You have the Eastern Conference's most complete team. There's no need to mess that up. They're absolutely killing it these days. So, like, I, I love... I love that. You know, getting Tarasenko, I know his family's in Florida. Maybe that way he's able to kind of elevate his game from earlier this season. They didn't give up an arm and a leg to get him. I think that, that what they sent over to the Senators was fair, if not actually a, a bargain for them. And then they added in Kyle Ocpozo. You, you just get another veteran in there, somebody who has been through the worst of it. And, and when you go to a new environment, a winning environment, kind of like when Eichel went to the Golden Knights, like, that can make a huge difference on a player like that. So uh, Bill Zito, Bill Zito gets at the worst, like a B plus. So I, I think that he's had an efficient trade deadline and they didn't need to be in the running for any of these big fish. Hannafin's wearing number five. That makes sense to me. And I think he was a fifth overall pick, wasn't he? And Mantha will be 39. Yeah. 39. Um, that's what he's accustomed to wearing. Yeah. So glad that they can get their numbers hopefully hurdle can easily get his number 48 right so um do you have the new sharks jersey yet no not the black one i'll i'll, I'll hopefully be able to scoop it up um you know during the summer at the latest still 200 beauties hanging out with us guys are awesome as we uh, are approaching the 90 minute mark uh let's see if uh anything else has come in okay of course the sharks have reported that the buffalo uh deal with uh devin cooley if he plays like logan cooley but between the pipes i'm, I'm cool with that i guess your thoughts on the hurdle trade? Yeah, Sin, who usually makes videos on the uh, NHL video game series, actually made a video on this trade. Um, he's a Sharks fan. At least for now. We'll see uh, what, what the fan wagon looks like these days. This is a much better deal for the Devils. The Sharks getting the second iteration of the Vanacek Blackwood experience. Yeah, I, I didn't even think about that. <laughs> the Sharks tandem could be Vanacek and Blackwood. That's actually pretty nuts. <laughs> oh wow so that's who you were talking about earlier riley akira toriyama who created dragon ball god rest in peace man what that what that did for for anime and for animation and you know the popularization that of that in the western world that's tragic that's that's horrible to hear but um what an icon man Freeing up $3.4 million of cap space. Yeah, that's huge for New Jersey. The Canucks did not sign Phil Kessel. Oh, man, we didn't get Phil Kessel. Damn, that sucks. Wait, has Cap Friendly actually called in the hurdle trade? Uh, I don't think they have. No, no, not yet. Okay, let me uh, get caught up again here. Um, if the, oh yeah, that's right. Do I think the Predator's recent success quieted the Saros trade? I, I think so, yeah. Considering he has one more year left on his deal, I, I'm actually kind of surprised that they didn't get any bites on like Alexander Carrier or Tyson Berry, considering they're free agents at the end of next year. I would have thought that they would have entertained that. Uh, because Trotz had said it was unlikely, uh, you know, looking back about a week or so ago, that they would move Soros, and he's got one more year left. So I, I think that's fine that they didn't trade him. And and yeah, I I, I totally uh, think that you were, you were onto something with that comment. Uh, the retro from twenty twenty one. Oh really? I, I know a lot of people who don't like that one. I'm not a big fan of it either. Um, but yeah, the the new black one I think is I think it's awesome. I love it. Uh, are Couture and Vlasic the only players left from 2016? Yes. Yes, Jameson. 
Um, I've always heard, you know, Cooch's name has come up here and there about teams maybe potentially being interested in him. The problem with that is that the Sharks couldn't consume any more salary. He's got three more years left on his deal at $8 million. He's got, of course, trade restrictions. Not a full no-move clause, but he has restrictions. Um, and the Sharks now have salary retained on three players next year. So that will reduce to two as we go into the 2025-26 season. But Carlson will still have two more years left uh, salary-wise with San Jose. And Hurdle will have five years left with the Sharks. Jesus. Do all teams rotate goalies or do some go with a hot hand? You're seeing more of the former these days, right? There are only a, a few goaltenders out there who are going to be playing 65 games now. Uh, and teams, you see them actually succeed with three goaltenders because injuries for goaltenders are very common. But uh, I still think that teams, for the most... Like, if you have a, a number one like Shesterkin, right? Even if Quick is, like, really hot going into the playoffs, you still roll with Shesterkin unless he's been catastrophically horrible for the last couple of weeks, right? Leafs need to sign Phil. Ah, that'd be amazing. Um, could do some NHL trivia while we're waiting. Uh, you got you got some questions? Really wanted Barry to be traded. Yeah, I mean, like, you, you would think somebody would buy it out there and say, hey, we could use some help on our second power play. Uh, can you look at how much cap space is left for the Penguins? Yeah, yeah. Still 200 people here. I'm... I'm blown away, guys. I'm much more blo I'm more blown away by that or from that than I am uh, that the Sharks traded hurdle. All right, Pittsburgh Penguins right now have a projected twenty thousand dollars left. Yeah, and then this is what the uh, Penguins contracts look like going forward. So you look at UFAs. Jeff Carter will be a UFA. Emil Brandstrom, uh, P.O. Joseph. I would think that he would. You know, at least be uh, on the books for another two years after this year. Nedeljkovic, I, I didn't hear about any teams making an offer at Nedeljkovic, and he's had a pretty good year. Uh, also, Jansen Harkins. And, uh, yeah. So, for the Pens, I mean, they don't have a lot of wiggle room in the offseason uh, in terms of, you know, spending money on new players. They would have to do this via trades. NHL Kahoot. Oh, I, I have nothing to do with, with Kahoot. I, I've never I've never tried that before. I'm you know, I'm a, I'm an older millennial, so it becomes more difficult to like adopt platforms. I finally got us a Discord after like four years of people asking here and there. But hey, I'm glad I did because it's it's turning out fantastic. Oh uh, yeah, <laughs> I gotta get back to this fella here, Joe, on the uh on the jersey for uh or not the jersey. <laughs> The the t-shirt for his uh, correct trade deadline prediction. All right. Well, anyway, yeah, we've gone past an hour and a half. So I'm going to do one more refresh here. Okay, here's... Oh, we got a, a seventh out of that too. Okay, okay, we got something. We got something for uh, for Kapik Hakkinen. We Okay, okay. Golf clap. Because we when we traded for Kakinen, it was like a seventh rounder or something uh, less than that. Who do I think won the deadline? There we go, yeah. I mean, like... The thing is, is that I can't. It's it sucks because a lot of people wouldn't think Florida won the deadline because again they got Tarasenko and and uh, and they got uh, uh, Akposa, right? But the thing is, is that for what they needed at the trade deadline, I don't even think they, think that they needed to really do anything. And so it's kind of like I think that by not taking a risk when they didn't need to, I think that that makes them a winner in my book. Carolina will be one of the first names that people think of in the East. Uh, I think that they have a high, they've made a bigger splash uh, for potential impact. Uh, Gensel can perform in the playoffs pretty well, um, so I'd say that they'd probably be my winner in the East. And it's hard to to to, to say that Vegas didn't come out as the winner of the deadline. I mean, this might be the biggest trade deadline uh, for for a team. Um, in the history of my channel, honestly, because he didn't overpay. <laughs> they the, or, or uh, McCrimmon didn't overpay. McCriminal, yeah, right. He, he Greer must have the owner's word to pull some of these trades. Seems like he's thinking years down the line. If you can elaborate on that, I, I'd be curious to to know what you mean. Because I, you know, it seems like a perspective I might not have uh, might not have uh, considered. Not at least not yet. 
as we still have 200 beauties hanging out with us here. Either that or StreamYard's lying to me. All right, there's the trade there. This is it. Burns, Carlson, Meyer. Yeah. Couture. Whoa, whoa. We're jumping to, jumping to conclusions there. We can make a jump to conclusions, Matt, for Mike Greer. Oh, Marosh and Shaco for the uh, Capitals. That's awesome. I, I didn't know that he had lymphoma. There was some there was some good pub on this guy um, for what he was doing in, in, I guess, Russia before this. Damn it! I want that. I want that call to be official before I make a rant. Right? This is Sportsnet, but I, I want to wait until I, I, I trust it ninety eight point five percent. But I want to see, I want to see like an official report from the Sharks because it's taking a long time for them to announce it. Granted, they're probably also thinking of some sort of tribute video that they can throw together for this. Has a wild card team ever won the cup, or never? I think you mean has a wild card team ever won the cup? Yeah, the Kings back in 2012, they were the lowest seeded team to ever win a Stanley Cup. They were the eighth seed, so they were like the last team to get a playoff spot in the Western Conference. Not only did they win the cup, but um, they put together one of the most dominant runs that we've seen in our lifetime. They went, I believe, because you have to win 16 games to win the Stanley Cup. They lost, I think, only five playoff games in the total of their four best of seven rounds. They went 16 and five. And Jonathan Quick had one of the greatest goaltending performances in a playoff for the uh, Kings to win their first ever Stanley Cup. They couldn't do it with Gretzky, but uh, with a young Jonathan Quick, a young Andre Kopitar, younger, uh, and uh, Dirty Dustin Brown as their as their captain, they captured their first chance to hoist Lord Stanley's. Immaculate trophy. Actually, no, immaculate. It's been dented and scratched a bunch. Oh, it seems like he's comfortable about his job security like the owners promised. He won't get fired for five years or something. I see what you're saying. I, I can't remember if you had said this or somebody else. Like, my Greer is like literally DGAF mode, right? He's, how is this all possible with no cap space left? Um, Injured reserve, long-term injured reserve. So you can basically like defer players salaries if they're injured and then in the south like i'm sorry correct me if i'm wrong folks but like in this in the uh, playoffs the salary cap goes away so the golden knights could theoretically have a team of you know noah hannafin and tomas hurdle and mark stone and jonathan marcheseau and jack eichel and so on and so forth <laughs> three trivia questions all right um, sure, sure. How about you shoot that over our way? And uh, if you can post it in the chat, that, that'd be cool. Um, and then and then after that, I probably should bounce because I want to make sure I I squeeze in a rant. I got I gotta at least give my best my best shot here. Vegas could be Vegas would be in in our in in the post salary cap era, like. Yeah, they would be the second in this case, the second wild card to win the Stanley Cup, unless I'm thinking incorrectly. But I, I don't know. Vegas could actually leapfrog. I don't think they're going to win the division, but they could leapfrog the Kings and the Oilers. Sharks are done trading. Announced they're done with trades. Looks like they couldn't move Barbanov. And that makes me mad because I thought they should have moved him at last year's deadline or in the offseason because they could have gotten... I think that the most they could have gotten him was maybe a second. Maybe they would have to trade Barbanov in a third... Or excuse me, Barbanov in like a seventh in exchange for like a second rounder. But yeah, that I, I saw that as a miss last year. I saw that as a, a bigger miss in the offseason. And so that does frustrate me, honestly. And the NHL, this is it. 
Vegas has sucked lately. They have to worry about keeping their wild card position. Well, do you think that the, like the Blues or the Kraken, do you think that those teams could potentially leapfrog them? Because personally, I, I just don't see that. Maybe there's something I haven't thought about. Uh, will Anthony Bovelli make a difference? I just don't know if Anthony Bovelli is that kind of player anymore. Then again, if he played with Ryan O'Reilly, he very well could. Yeah. The Flames could. I don't know. When, uh, now they've lost. I, I, who knows, man? Like They lost Lindholm, and they started playing better, right? They lost Tanev. They, they were playing better. But now they've lost Hannafin. I just, it might just be, I just can't see them over leapfrogging the Golden Knights. That it's just not, that's just not something I imagine happening. But stranger things have happened, man. Uh, here's a, a question. Okay, okay, okay. I'm a two time Hart Trophy winner and a three time Stanley Cup champion. You get one hint. Who am I? Oh, okay. I have, um, Thinking, uh, well, I'm thinking I might know who that could be. If, if you have any guesses, yeah. XLR0 says, uh, Yevgeny Malkin. Three Stanley Cups does kind of stand out, right? I don't remember Pat Maroon uh, winning any hard trophies. Yeah, so feel free to shout out your guesses in the chat there. Jonathan Taves. I don't think Taves ever won a Hart Trophy. Kane won one, so I, it'd be hard to imagine Kane winning two. Or uh, Taves winning two. <laughs> now, personally, I don't know if Malkin has two Hart Trophies. But you can't forget that like Malkin was all, like just as dominant as Sid and Ovechkin. Have a guess, guys. But uh, XLR zero with a quick response. I'll I'll I'll, I'll give it to Malkin. Sure, I'll say Gino for uh, four hundred, Alex. Because, yeah, I think Kane just has one. And that would have been 2015-16, I think. Why don't you go ahead and uh, reveal the answer, Ace of Toronto? He's got one heart, I think. Yeah, Kaner. None is correct. Oh, none, none of them. Interesting. Ah, uh, hmm. Three Stanley Cups, two heart trophies. Yeah, it kind of depends on like. I don't know if you can give us a hint on the era, right? Because it could be somebody from way, way, way before our time, or even before our uh, parents' time. Oh, it is Sid. Okay, 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 cool. Um, give us question number two. And while that happens, I'm just going to keep refreshing my screen to see if anything else has come in here. Jeez Louise, man. Oh, God. The Sharks on their social media won't even say they... Oh, God. I, 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 I have to show you this. Look at this. The Sharks have acquired a 2025 first-round draft selection and prospect center... David Edstrom from the Golden Knights. They didn't even say it in exchange for Tomas Hurdle. God. Unbelievable. You got to bounce? Oh, I'll talk to you later, Jake. Thanks for hanging out with us, man. Y'all wanted to rebuild and to blow it up. Y'all got it. No, no one is older than 24 is spared. No one younger than 20. Wait, yeah, yeah, excuse me. 
I mean, true. Absolutely true. If ultimately, like, let's let's say this. If the Golden Knights don't win another Stanley Cup, and if the Sharks are actually, like, a competitive team uh, in the 2026-27 season and can make the playoffs, then we start to see the light at the end of the tunnel. But at this time, we're still in the abyss. Uh, do we have that second question there, XLR? Or uh, Ace of Toronto? Uh, you have every jersey in every NHL, like, every NHL team? No, 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 no. I've actually downsized uh, a fair bit. Um, like there are a couple teams I don't have jerseys for now because I've sold them. I still have two more if we got time. Yeah, yeah. Just uh, keep them coming here because I do want to wrap up pretty soon because I think we're all done with all the news. Philip Pritchard. I have my picture with him. A little bit more on the Rangers here. Um, Drury did well with his trades that he was involved in, didn't overpay for too much for auxiliary players. Exactly. That's what I think. But it, are, are they going to be like the, the cup favorite based on what they did just there? Not necessarily. You know, I don't, I don't think so. We'll take good care of him. Oh, I, I don't doubt that at all, man. If, yeah. If the Sharks land the number one pick, is it worth it for celebrating? Uh, I wouldn't look at it that way because Hurdle is injured. Like he's been injured for a little while. So, Hurdle's departure doesn't have any impact on the Sharks' ability to land Macklin Celebrini. That's what I'm trying to say. But, like, at this point, it's like we really do need that kind of miracle pick because um, San Jose's never picked first overall, and there is a gap between Celebrini and the talent beneath him, kind of like there was with Bedard as we got up to the, uh, to the draft last year. And Bedard, I know, is touted much more highly but I did hear that, like, Celebrini, if you look at uh, prospects or, or, like, you know, top selections from the last several years, Celebrini is one of the higher uh, regarded number ones. So that's cool. Uh, second, okay, okay. Uh, I was the sixth overall pick in 09. You get two extra hints. Oh, really? Oh, geez. In 09. So that player would be about how old? Well, wait a second here. So, 09. So, that player is probably about 33 years old right now. OEL. Hey, actually, that's a pretty good guess. If Yeah. Knights tweeted about Hurdle's trade. Oh, yeah. How, how could you not? Hashik is the only goalie with more than one Vezina, if you remember correctly. Oh, thank you, Dustin. I appreciate that, buddy. See you next time. Right on, man. Hey, I appreciate that. Good luck to the Panthers, man. I mean, if it's not the, sh if it's not the Hurricanes, I... I really do hope it's you guys. Um, ha Hashik, I, I think, Adam, what you mean is because uh, Hashik has two MVP. He has two or three. I think he has three heart trophies as the MVP. Because um, I, th I think that's what you mean. Your youngest brother was born in 09. Phone a friend. Um, ph phone a family member. Bobrovsky. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Bob has two business, right? Ken Dryden has like, yeah, yeah, back in the day, right? Ken Dryden has like five or six Vezinos. Jacques Plant has plenty, you know. Yeah, I think we're talking about heart trophies for MVP, though. Mm. On fire, nice job. All right, Ace, you got one more for us? Uh, sharks are done. What is your rating of Greer's move? Not enough impact going into the hurdle trade. I think it's got to be, I think it's bad. I think it's really bad. But, you know, my perspective on this can change. It can. Yeah. No Barbanov trade for the Sharks. They weren't able to get the finish line to get to the finish line on a deal. He was expecting to move, but he stays and will test the UFA market this July. That sucks for him. Congrats on your first. Yeah, that was cool. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I think we're all we're all done with the actual trades. 
Should keep Arbanov? I don't think so. His his value has dropped off a ton, honestly. At least if they wanted to hang on to him, they could get him at a really good deal, I think. But yeah, he's been ever since his injury. I really think he's he's been unnoticeable. His he was trending down, uh, dating back two seasons ago, and then like he he trended downward. I saw like analytically, but I still thought he was pretty solid last year. And not to mention, like he had to play some top six for us too, like second line. You thought Calgary would take him for a cap dump? No, the Sharks, uh, they're they're pretty good at taking their own dumps. All right, we got one more uh, coming from you here, Ace. Hit me with the good stuff. And then I'll bounce out and I will, uh, I will do something on my channel that I don't do very often. And that is just go raw with you guys. Uh, not live, uh, recorded video. No editing, no fancy stats, nothing like that. Ooh, okay, here we go. Uh, I'm tied with Rick Nash for most goals in a single season for the Jackets. You get just one hint. I know, I, I do know who this is. I do know who this is. I don't even know Voronkov's first name. All I know is that somebody with this player's first name actually did appear in our chat at some point in this stream. Skadoosh. Uh, I don't think Aginla ever played for the Blue Jackets. Golden Knights with Stone will be crazy. Yeah, once they get him back, they have a good shot to repeat. Yeah, my my sincerest of hopes is that um, the only team that can stop them is the Hurricanes. Good guess, Jameson, but um, there was kind of a... I, I know the guy was beloved in Columbus, but he did have that kind of one-hit wonder, that one like big-time breakthrough, that cusp in his career, right? He read the question completely wrong. That's okay. That's all right. It's always worth going back to things multiple times. And doing content creation like this, you got you end up doing the same thing too. It is Cam Atkinson. Yep, Dimitri Voronkov. Yeah, I was thinking it was Dimitri. But sometimes it's spelled differently, so that I was already second-guessing myself. It's stay healthy and get to third place. Exactly, Riley. You hit the nail on the head. And with that said, um, let's wrap this up. We, had, we still had 200 people hanging out with us. You guys have been fantastic. Thank you so much. We'll have more streams like this, especially as we get into the playoffs. In the meantime, I got a video to record. So from Cortana and myself, uh, thanks for all your support. And uh, look, looking forward to conversing with you again real soon, guys. Have a great rest of your day and weekend. I'll catch you soon.